Good morning. Today we look at uh, uh, Acts chapter 19, verses 1 through 20. And uh, we're into Paul's second missionary journey. He has left Apollos in Corinth, and that's where chapter 19 starts. Well, Apollos was in Corinth. Paul passed through interior regions, came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. And Ephesus is the town or the region that uh, the book of Ephesians is written to later. Um, and he found some disciples, it says. And he asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you were baptized? And they don't know anything about a Holy Spirit. And, and then, uh, <laughs> to me, in some ways, John asks a silly question. Then what in, in what you were you baptized? And, well, the other baptism, if it's not in Jesus in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, or by Jesus, it would be the baptism of John, which is what they respond, the baptism into John's baptism. And, and Paul goes on then to explain that the baptism of John, the, John, the one that John proclaimed, the ones that you're baptized in, is a, a baptism of repentance. And there's a difference between a baptism in the name of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit will come. So they were baptized. And it says, when Paul laid hands on them, they received the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues and prophesied. And there were about 12 of them. Interesting to me, that number of 12 of them, just like Jesus' original 12 disciples. Um, but anyway, he, then he entered the synagogue and says for three months. So he, he was in Ephesus for three months, you know, um, and it says arguing and having discussions with them in the synagogue. And some stubbornly refused to believe and spoke of the way be, and spoke evil of the way before the congregation. And so um, here it's still known as the way or called the way here, although, you know, we... We have heard that word Christian um, a little bit, but it wasn't a common common name for those who followed Jesus. It was a different way of believing. It was a different way of discipleship. It was a different way of looking at God. But he, so he finally left, he says, taking his disciples with them and going to Tyrannus. And this continued then, it says, for two years that he was in this other city. Uh, so that residents, it says, so that all the residents of Asia, both Jews and Greeks, heard the word of the Lord. Uh, so I, I think that, again, is, is interesting. They, they heard the word of the Lord. It doesn't say that they all became believers, but they all heard the word of the Lord. They had that opportunity, you know, and excuse me, I don't know how large an area this Tyrannus was where Paul was, but... Uh, all of the people there uh, heard the word. And, and, and this is what Jesus would have. That was what God would have, is that all people would hear the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the next verse, verse 12, is one I've got kind of highlighted in my Bible. And it's, you know, God did extraordinary miracles through Paul. And, and I think it's beautiful the way uh, Luke, the writer of this, puts that. God did amazing miracles through Paul. To remind us it wasn't Paul. It wasn't Paul's power. It wasn't Paul's spirit or ability. It was God working through Paul. And when I think about Paul, who was Saul, who was persecuting the Christians and how he changed, you know, just a few chapters ago, uh, he had that encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus and Paul, or Paul is a, a person that God is working through. And it just, it's just, you know, it's a reminder that God can work through any, any one of us. And it's, you know, kind of a, a humbling thought to think that God may be working through, you know, one of us that way. You know, <laughs> working through me. I mean, what a surprise. I mean, but... You know, been working through you. I mean, this is what God does. But Paul had, there was so much power of God and so much of God working through Paul that it says that when handkerchiefs or aprons that had touched his skin were brought to those sick, 
their diseases left them and the evil spirits f came out of them. And you think about that, just to take a, a handkerchief and, and have Paul touch it or wipe his arm on it or, you know, and that, that handkerchief then had the power of God in it, not the power of Paul, but the power of God in it to, to heal and to cast out demons. Now that's, that's a tremendous, tremendously amazing work that God is doing through this disciple he chose, Paul. And then verse 13, trouble comes again. Some itinerant Jewish exorcists. So these are itinerant, that means they're moving around, they're traveling around city to city. And this is what Paul is. He's an itinerant preacher. You know, he's on his second missionary journey, going city to city, town to town, area to area. But they come and they, they try to use the name of Jesus over some evil spirits. And, I mean, you know, many of the early believers were Jewish, but these Jewish exorcists evidently hadn't become followers of Jesus. But they tried to use Jesus' name and, and over some evil spirits. They say, I adjure you, I order you by the, by the Jesus whom Paul proclaims, you know, to come out. And there were seven sons that, and it says this evil spirit said to them, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but I have no idea who you are. Now think, think, think about that. The evil spirit says, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but you, I don't know who you are. And they had no power over him. As a matter of fact, it says this evil spirit overpowered them so badly that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. And uh, it's... So uh, while God was working strongly through Paul, um, and remember in the Gospels where the disciples came to Jesus and said, you know, there's somebody over there casting out demons in your name. And Jesus says, those who are for us are not against us, you know, and don't worry about that. But so here, here it's different for, for whatever reason. These people, these Jewish exorcists, I mean, so they were, you know, probably not, I, mean, I don't know, they were, they, an exorcist probably had a spirit of some sort within them, maybe it was a, a demon, who knows, but, but these, they were not faithfully, you know, and they were saying, by the name of Jesus, whom Paul proclaims, and I mean, they, it seems that they used kind of the right words, but they had no power. And so many of those, it says in verse 18, many of those who became believers confessed and disclosed their practices. And a number of those who practiced magic collected their books and burned them publicly. So this is in addition to those, these seven Jewish itinerant exorcists that were traveling around, they burned their books of magic. And it's tremendous value. 50,000 silver coins, it says, was the value of all of these books. And you think about, you know, the value of silver. Today it's $25 a, a troy ounce for silver, just, just a little over $25 an ounce. And so I don't know how big these silver coins were, but you, uh, but at, at today's price, you know, $25 to get, you know, 50,000 silver coins. If you had 50,000 50, ounces of silver, or if a coin was a, a tenth of an ounce even, tremendous, tremendous value. And that they, that they burned, they destroyed, knowing that, you know, this was contrary to God's will, contrary to what God would have them doing. And so they destroyed it. And that, that reminded me of, of a person I talked to. He was working in a Christian bookstore and had come to believe in Jesus, you know, at, you know, probably in his early 20s. And he said that his baptism, someone had given him the, the lost books of the Bible. And he told me as I was reading one of the books in there, it says that when Jewish Jesus was a boy, one of his friends displeased him. So Jesus pointed his finger at him and zapped him. And he said, that's not the Jesus I know. So I went out of town and I burned that book. I didn't even want to throw it away for fear that someone would see it because this wasn't the Jesus that I had come to believe in. So these... People, these Jewish itinerant uh, magicians and exorcists, in order that others wouldn't fall under that same illusion, 
burned all of those books of magic so that others might, might not be introduced to this wrong thinking. And today we have you know, many people uh, that are trying to influence our youth, and well, not only youth, but, but everybody with, with false influences. We have false preachers, and, and we have preachers that are, you know, not all of the TV evangelists and the big name evangelists are, are evil people, but they sure know how to profit for themselves rather than simply profit for Jesus. And, and this is what God would have us do, profit for Jesus' sake.